Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond. Welcome back to the podcast. I hope that you are having an amazing day wherever you are in the world listening to this. I'm sending you so much love and yeah, I'm really excited to share with you. Today I want to talk about relationships. So I have been in a relationship pretty much straight since I was 18. When I moved to Copenhagen three years ago was the first time that I really decided to be on my own and like consciously choosing to be single uh, me being in a relationship was not necessarily something like my whole life wasn't necessarily something that I like consciously chose it was just like every t- well first off I got married when I was 18 I was married for six years and then after that I think I was just so used to cohabitating with someone and sharing my energy with someone and I was very codependent as we say which means like you lose yourself in the other person you don't know emotionally where you begin and what where they end where you end and they begin you know what I mean and um I got to the point where I wasn't really even sure why I was with this person I was just so used to being with someone and also something to know about me is I am full of love like I always (sighs) <sighs> I I have so much love to share and I um yeah and I and I, I think it is more beautiful to do it together um but what I wasn't very aware of was that um I was I was like I kept having in my my reality bubble I kept having the men that I would fall in love with just completely lose themselves in me and so, and I didn't like this because like I wanted to be with them. I wanted to love them, but I wanted to still be an individual. And so what I started doing was um, f- being attracted to men who, a- after a while, being attracted to men who, what, if you know anything about uh, attachment styles, um, that they were avoidant emotionally. So they were avoided attachment as in they would give me all of the space in the world but they wouldn't actually like allow my love in. <clears throat> and um, I would kind of bop back and forth between these two, but the, 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 like, so I have this thing where I like to say, I want to be chosen and free. So I want to have a deep connection with someone. And I also want to be myself and be an individual and be free to like explore the world and explore emotionally with other people and sexually and all these things. And I just thought that for a long time, <laughs> especially being raised in a religion where you're not allowed to have sex outside of marriage and you're only supposed to have sex with one person your whole life, I I really thought something was wrong with me. I was like, am I an alien? Like, Or, you know, growing up in a, in a environment where it was like morally wrong, like, you know, you're a bad person if you want to have sex with more than one people or if you you know, are not fully, completely enmeshed in your partner. Um, And I was just complete, I was really confused. I wasn't confused, okay, I wasn't confused within myself. I was confused why the world did not reflect back to me what I felt deep in my knowing was true for me. And so I kind of buried that, that my authentic self very deep inside. And um, yeah, I kind of got imprinted with this reality that uh, it's a not as Faraday says I became a belief thief um apparently this is a quote from Bashar this guy that he listens to a lot and I now listen to someone who's channeling a lot of things um but basically I had this belief that either my love was too much and it would overwhelm someone or you know when I showed them all of my love they would get so attached that they wouldn't allow me to be free anymore. They would be so threatened that someone else would take, quote-unquote, that love that they wanted or they thought they deserved from me. And so I just kind of went into this frozen state of, like, either not showing my love all the way to someone because I worried that it would overwhelm them or I think deep down it was actually a belief that they would love it so much that they wouldn't allow me to be myself anymore, that I wouldn't be able to be free. And it would, it would just kind of show up in my body as this really unsafe feeling. So, and this is like the words that would come out of my mouth when I would talk to them and I wouldn't be able to even like put it into like logical, (laughs) you know, whatever logical means, but like, I wouldn't be able to like 
speak it to my partner, whoever I was dating at the time. I've probably had, if I count on like my hand, probably like six or seven major relationships in my life. So the first one was my ex-husband, who I was married to for six years. And then after that, it would be like someone I would be dating for like a year. And we'd be traveling all over the world. We'd be building businesses together. You know, having these really epic adventures in life. But emotionally, I would either feel that I wasn't able to express all of my love for them. Or I would choose men who were emotionally avoidant that I wasn't actually, I would love to them, but I wasn't in love with them because then they would allow me to, or I would perceive that they would allow me to feel free. <sighs> Neither of these situations felt good in my body all the way. And obviously this is why I left. And it's really interesting because I just kept coming back to this feeling of like, okay, I want to, I didn't know the words for it then about wanting to feel chosen and free at the same time. And then this year, I was dating someone. Um, my my major my last major relationship before Faraday was someone named Andy, who was the first alien I ever dated. <laughs> and ironically, or maybe not ironically, he was also raised in the same religion as me, but in Europe. And we met on Copenhagen. And from the first moment that I met him, I was like, oh, fuck, this is someone like me. I, I didn't know that that person existed in the masculine. Like, I didn't, I never met a man who was like me. And I was so in love with him. I was like, wow, 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 wow. Someone that I can, like, be myself all the way with, you know, and who I can be chosen and free. And, and I met him in, like, April of 2020. And for that whole summer, I was single and I was just so in love with Andy. Like all of my friends were just so tired <laughs> of hearing me talk about Andy. And they were just like, why don't you just get with Andy? You know, like, Brittany, you can have whoever you want. And then why don't you just tell him you love him? And I was so still had this frozen feeling of like, if I tell him I love him, then, you know, what if it's too much for him? And, you know, what if he can't carry this? And what if, what if it doesn't work out? And it's so funny because we ended up living together in my villa. We had an extra room and I just told, I randomly bumped into him in a coffee shop. Like it was like, we had this like very strong connection and both of us, he was taking a summer for himself and doing shadow work, which means like he was diving into his own stuff and doing his work and everything and take, and just being alone a lot. And I was like, okay, I totally honor that. I really did. I really respected that. And so whenever I would just see him like in a coffee shop, I would just talk to him for a little bit, but I wasn't yeah, I'm like, do your thing, you know? And then so I saw him one time and I was like, <laughs> uh, oh yeah, you know, my friend moved out of our villa and my landlord is amazing. But she was like, if you guys can't find someone, th it was like, they, they, they had this, what we call a mother-in-law house. So like an extra house outside of the villa on the same property. And she was like, if you guys can't find someone, I want you to keep living here. But I, I'll move in, you know, with her six-year-old son. And I was just like, yeah, so we're not going to be able to do our parties and like walk around naked like we always do. So I was kind of like jokingly saying this to Andy. I'm like, yeah, my landlord's going to like move in. I don't know what to do. And then like a couple of days later, he messaged me and was like, do you still need a roommate? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I, yeah, I can move in. Do you like, do you want me to like, basically, is that okay? And I'm like, and you know, of course in my heart, I was like, fuck yes like but does he realize that I'm like fully in love with him so anyways I just kept it casual and I was like yeah yeah move in and then we were friends we lived in this villa together and hosted many events and um and we were just kind of like around each other all the time but it was like completely chosen because we weren't together and like everyone assumed we were dating each other and sleeping together but we weren't we hadn't even like kissed or anything for four months <laughs> imagine the sexual tension building up here and yeah, I just was more and more in love with him. And then he would always talk about these like younger women that he was, he was, uh, he was like five years older than me, but he was always attracted to these girls in like their early twenties. And I, and like, like I call them in a nice way, but I'm like, yeah, babies, they're babies, you know, like they, they're not grown women. They haven't fully come into themselves. And I was always just so confused. And, um, Anyways, we did a acid day. 
at our house like we loved all the same things so we were both like super into psychedelics and all the experimenting with it when it comes to healing and like building community and everything and so during this full lockdown we had this five bedroom villa on the on the water and it was like a you know a gated villa with a front lawn and then this huge living room with this huge balcony that went down and then the next layer was a pool and then a lawn and then it was on the water with kayaks and it was like the perfect playground so we invited 10 of our friends we told the maid to not come that day and we locked the gate and we all took acid together and it was so beautiful and on my acid trip I was like wow I saw the timeline of us being together and like all the beautiful things we could create and all this stuff and I just I couldn't not say it and so I went down I like I kind of like ran away I like went down to the water and just like was meditating by myself when the acid was hitting me really hard and so Andy of course could feel me as we always could feel each other and he came down to the water and you know imagine at but until this point we are friends right we are totally friends and I just told him I was like I can just see it all and I can just see the whole timeline and he was like what are you talking about and I'm like I think he knew what I was talking about he was just scared and um yeah I was like yeah it's okay if you just want to be friends I'm happy for that but like you know I see so much more and I I would love more (laughs) not like I would love more but I was just kind of trying to say it in a like a I don't know like I think he could feel it we could sense it with each other but words were not coming out right (laughs) Um, and then about a month later, I just got to this, it was like right before my birthday. And I was like, I really, um, I really, basically my friends were just like, you need to just tell him like, you need to just like, if he's not going to speak it, you need to just just tell him. And so I, I invited him over to my room one night and I was just like, look, I will always be your friend, you know, but I need to know if. I need to know if I need if I should save my heart for you and if not that's okay you're not going to lose anything for me our our connection will always be amazing I just need to know if I should open my heart to other people because this whole summer you know we him and I were both dating other people we bring them over to the house and it was kind of this dance we were doing and again like he's an alien like me so like we both were like into being chosen and free we were non-monogamous like by nature and so I wasn't upset at all these other women I was just like do you not see me (laughs) like do you not have a place for me in your life in this way you know but I didn't say that so I just was like I basically was super vulnerable with him and I was like I'm in love with you you know and and it's okay and I I am okay with this I'm okay with keeping this as friendship I just need to know you know so like let me know please and he was like okay I really honor that you brought this up and be for being vulnerable. And I, I really want to just sit with this. I don't want to have this come as a response. Like I want to make sure that I'm like coming from my own volition, like from my own whole self of, of honoring this and my response. And I was like, okay, great. Just uh, let me know soon, <laughs> you know? And for me, my birthday is kind of the beginning of my cyclical year. And yeah, so I, my birthday was a week later and in my head I was just kind of like okay I'll give him a week and like if starting on my birthday he you know if he does basically if he doesn't let me know by my birthday that is also an answer or if he tells me no or whatever it's also great but like I need to start my new year off (laughs) fresh and on my birthday he told me he loved me and it I just felt like this like click like I was like okay now we're on this timeline and we dated for um a year and a half I think and or maybe no we dated for a full year because I broke up with him a year later on my birthday and within that one year we had his best friend die we had uh and we organized her funeral and sent her body back (laughs) she died here on the island on Copanyong it was very traumatic and we made the most money we'd ever made in our lives we lost all of it (laughs) we built a whole community here on the island and started remote collective community space um and was like during covid and lockdown this was like the main hub for the whole community on the island of all of our friends and so (laughs) and in in all of that we were building a relationship with each other you know and i just remember when we first moved in together he was like running away from me emotionally and I was just like wow I found like the love of my life you know I'm so happy I'm so happy we found each other and I was just so emotional about it and I just wanted to like focus on our love 
And I just remember waking up and like he wouldn't want to talk to me and he wanted to sleep in the other room, which was fine. I didn't care about sleeping in the other room, but it was just like I could feel this emotional wall that he was putting up with me. And I realize now it's because, you know, he was worried about getting lost in me and was very like it wasn't about me. It was his own stuff, you know, but at the time I really I didn't realize this until like this week, like yesterday, Faraday and I had a conversation my boyfriend and I had a conversation about our relationship, my current relationship. And I was like, wow, so much of this got imprinted from my last major relationship that I had, which was a year ago. Um, and I, yeah, I, I didn't realize that I still had this feeling of like, I'm too much, you know, when I love someone all the way, they'll run away. And this is literally what Andy did. He just kind of like ran away from me in most ways. Like, he wanted to be live in a different like we moved in together we he wanted to live in a different house like if we spent quote unquote too much time together he would need to be away from me in order to like come back to himself and i was just like what the fuck is going on like when you love someone why are you running away from them and then um you know before we were together we had always talked about like how we wanted to be chosen and free like we didn't use those words but we were like yeah we see ourselves as being like non-monogamous and and then when we were together, like, I was like, yeah, I want to have this love bubble with you. And, like, once we have this foundation and we feel, like, really secure in our, like, relationship to each other, I would love to have other lovers and ha- and use, th- not use, but, um, <laughs> like, have the other connections be something that adds to our relationship and makes our relationship even more powerful. Because I don't believe that, I believe that we all can... F- we can get everything that we need within ourselves. But also I think that it's really beautiful to have the community support our relationship and that, you know, we don't need to put all of everything onto our partner. We can have other people in our lives that we co-regulate with, which means like we, we get our emotional regulation from and uh, support and everything. And I, I really wanted this in our relationship. Um, and he just, he said all the words and then he would always say like, okay, I don't think we're ready yet. I don't think we're ready yet, but wouldn't tell me what that meant or, or like, you know, the timeline of this. And this is all like, again, made me feel very constricted and and not free. And so I spent a whole year like this and I was just like screaming on the inside, especially after his best friend died. I was there for him and everything, but I was drowning because he wasn't talking to any even his best friends that he'd known for like 15 years that were on the island here he wasn't talking to any of them about what was going on really for him emotionally so I was the only person that knew and you know his best friend had just died and like that's a lot for him to deal with he ended up being suicidal for a while and I was the only person that really understood what was going on and I was drowning in it and I didn't know how to ask for help and then anyone that I talked to I was he like basically didn't want me to talk to people because he didn't want anyone to know what was going on with him. And I'm like, okay, all of this is super unhealthy. But in the moment, I didn't know any of that. <laughs> and um, I'm laughing because there's tropical birds outside. Um, <clears throat> so all of this is like red flags, unhealthy everywhere. But when you love someone and when you meet your first alien, like him and I would talk about other dimensions. We would go into like the psychedelic world together we would you know talk about building community and we would like we would do a lot of these things and on his own accord he was a community builder on the island uh, for many years before I got here so he showed me the island he connected me with a lot of people and I just loved him I loved his soul I just I wanted to just be kids together you know like some of my favorite times was when we were both on acid because he would allow himself to fully drop in into his body and like be a kid and we would just go on all these adventures and scooter rides and it was so beautiful and like and I was just like can we just do this all the time do we need why do we need to be on psychedelics in order for you to feel this way you know so this is all like from my perspective right I'm sure he has his own version of how all this went down but what I realized I I learned a lot from that and what I also realized from this is I was studying something um, that this guy named Bashar is channeling from the universe, from the all-knowing that is, and it was talking about relationships. And so I want to share some of these, uh, some of these golden nuggets that I found because 
when I read this, I was like, it just made everything with my relationship with Andy and then now my new relationship with Ferdy makes sense. And it made me want to cry because I was like, wow, this is basically everything that I have ever thought I wanted in a relationship was validated from this this Bashar channeling thing and I'm like I didn't just make this up this is actually how it it can be in the universe it's just there was no one doing it in the way that I I felt was good in my body you know so I mean one thing so one thing is they say every relationship is an obvious reflection of the things a person needs to understand and learn at that point in the timeline so basically You know, you hear a lot, your vibration attracts whoever is in your life who is on a similar vibration. And at that moment in time, I still, I still had to work through a lot of my own stuff because, um, I wasn't completely, so when I was matching the vibration of being with Andy, I wasn't completely ready to step into my full power. And again, I was, I think I was still a little bit scared to show my love all the way and also to be free all the way. And so then I matched with someone who was doing and mirroring that back to me, but maybe in a more, (laughs) a more harsher way. Um, Because basically at the end of our relationship, I was just bored. I remember sitting down and talking to him about it because we like, it wasn't working. We were, neither of us were happy, but like he wouldn't talk, like whenever we'd sit and talk about it, it would just feel like he would just intellectually loop and try and make it so that I was wrong and I was like I want to just talk to you about our emotions can we just like get to the point where we both feel safe to do this you know and I had gone through a lot of my own work and like that year I had done ayahuasca for the first time and I I'd really like let go of a lot of my own trauma and I got to the point where I was like just my natural vibration which is joy and I wanted to be with someone who just wanted to be joyful like the world is so beautiful and there's so many beautiful things to in, <laughs> to just enjoy and be and radiate and build and I was like can't we just be happy doing this like and the vibration vibrational match between him and I no longer worked and so like on my birthday I just sat him down and was like I need I can this is not working for me anymore I need to I need to let this go and like I still love you as a person and I want to be in each other's lives, but like I cannot do this, like whatever we're doing right now. And yeah, so we broke up. And like it still hurts me because now he won't talk to me. And it's like, I'm like, dude, we can still be in each other's lives and like support each other even from afar. And he won't speak to me. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, like I still like send him love. And I'm like, I hope you are good. And I would love to, like, actually really hurt me for a long time. I remember talking to some of my close friends who were also friends with him and just being like, why? Why does it, why? And then they were like, you know, he's creating his reality now. You need to go create your reality. I got, that was some really good advice was like, I do not need to make him good before I can enjoy my life. And this is something that I was raised with was I was born into a reality bubble where everyone was very upset around me all the time, like in their own suffering and they would kind of put that on me and I would as a little kid I would feel like I needed to make sure everyone else was happy before I could enjoy myself because that's like the survival mechanism that I had kick in with me um like with my parents you know like if you are raised in an environment that is very abusive then your natural survival skills is like I need to make sure that they are happy because they're literally feeding me like this is a normal thing that happens in your body but this is something that I was able to let go of and I'm so grateful for that so <laughs> I spent all of this year just really soaking up the vibration of being in joy and like being so happy and like loving my life and organizing play parties and traveling and like having many love adventures and and just being really grounded in what I would be okay with, you know, in the future of like whoever I wanted to be with. I was like, they need to be on this level, like n- not just awake so basically Andy I felt like was very awake but he was not in his body and he was not able to enjoy the 3D reality (laughs) and I'm like I'm awake and embodied I'm like I understand what's happening in the world and the timeline and like my place in it and my connection to my own source energy and it's amazing and like I can go and like meditate every morning and like really connect to this and journal and like talk to myself and I have this really beautiful relationship with myself as an individual 
And I'm also able to enjoy the 3D reality and just really soak it up, you know, like really be in my body. And I want to, I would love, <laughs> I don't want, I would love to have someone who matches that. And if, and if those person, if that person doesn't come into my life, it's great. Like I'm, my life is amazing. So whoever comes in next needs to be like fucking awesome and making my life even better. You know, the connection I would, I would joke like one plus one equals infinity. Like when two individuals are completely awake and embody themselves when they are together, so much magic happens all around them just because that energy is like amplified to the infinity point. And and in a way, like some of my downloads I got this year through doing ayahuasca and then Vipassana, which is like a 10-day silent meditation retreat, and just a lot of my own connection to my higher self, I was like, this is kind of, oh, and I did DMT for the first time. I did a lot of things this year. I did DMT for the first time. And on my DMT trip, it was talking about, like the big download I got was that consciousness wants to evolve. Like we are all part of consciousness, like our individual consciousness is part of a bigger consciousness and it wants to grow and evolve and it doesn't look at, it doesn't look at pain in the same way that we look at it. It's like we can either evolve through pain or pleasure, but consciousness doesn't look at it as a good or bad thing or positive and negative thing. Like, so when people are running around choosing to have these reality bubbles where everything doesn't work and it's painful, but they're still growing, then consciousness is like, great. <laughs> That's the choice and respect the timeline of whatever they're choosing. We can also equally grow in a way where it feels really good in our bodies and it's pleasurable and it can feel good all the way through. And this is something like I'm always imprinting in my friends. Like, how can it get even better? This is a question. How is this happening for me? Even if something what you view as a negative thing is happening or your partner is not, you know, doing the thing that you think that they should do. I'm like, no, no, no. Bring it back to yourself. How is this happening for me? And this is the thing about every relationship is a reflection of the things that we need to learn. So if something's going on in your partner, you either and it's irritating you then you either then it's showing you something that you can learn about yourself if something's negative happening in your partner and it doesn't irritate you but it confuses you that means that you've already vibrationally <laughs> does not match you anymore and then you will just naturally fade away from that person and you just won't be interested in having a relationship with them anymore because you don't need to learn anything it's just like confusing like why this person is creating drama and you're just like can we just be happy so, wow, I was channeling because I don't remember what I just said. Um, the next thing is everyone is connected to the whole. So there's never a question of disconnection. This is something that I notice a lot in relationships is that people f do not feel this connection to their higher self or the, the connection to the, the source energy that is all of us. Um, and so they kind of you only can do this for a while you can fake a connection to your source energy through your partner and this is what I call like if you look at two I, so I, I study people all the time in like relationships I don't tell them this but I'm always watching people and like <laughs> I'm always watching and studying because I want to learn like before I found before I found Freddie before Freddie and I you know were drawn into each other's lives I was like trying to figure out the puzzle of like how to be in a relationship and like what I felt was good and what I wanted for myself basically. So what I noticed a lot in the patterns I saw in people's relationships is they would get together. Each individual person would suddenly have this like burst of feeling connected and feeling like everything makes sense in the world and they have this tons of energy. But if they don't have like their own practice of how they connect to themselves and how they connect to their own higher self and source energy, then eventually, so then they, uh, they're feeding off of each other basically. And then there's a honeymoon phase of about three months. And if you look from a neuroscience point of view, like you actually are releasing serotonin, like all the happy um, things that, <laughs> that are firing off in your brain and your body where you're like it actually feels like a drug to be around this person like it feels so nice that usually lasts up to it's usually s starts fading at three months and it, it's completely gone by six months and so I see this like after people leave this quote-unquote honeymoon phase suddenly everything about their partner irritates them or they start complaining about their partner more and like they start projecting what they don't like about themselves and how they feel disconnected onto their partner and they want their partner to quote unquote love them more or claim them more and all this stuff. But if you have a connection to your own source energy, 
then that doesn't happen. Like, like with Faraday and I, like we <laughs> were like, wow, we're in this love bubble and all this stuff. And Faraday's like, but can't this just be our whole lives? And I'm like, yeah, this is going to be our whole lives. And I'm so excited for it. And a major reason for that is because we individually have a connection to our source energy and to our higher selves. And so when we are apart, we're like constantly connecting to ourselves and grounding in our individuality, which just makes us love each other even more and have all these downloads to share with each other the next time we're together. And, and then when we're together, we're just enjoying each other as two individuals, you know? So if you're with someone that the question you can ask yourself is why is the universe bringing us together right now? What is there to learn? And with Faraday and I, um, it's, it's not about, it's not about like, I mean, I love this question when it comes to him and I, because I feel like we have both hit a point where we've learned what we need to learn in order to be fully embodied and awake in ourselves. And so when we come together, we're not necessarily learning more about ourselves together I mean we still are but mostly what we're learning is like I always view it as like instead of facing each other and like learning a lot you're mirroring each other right you are actually once you hit a certain point of awakened embodiment you no longer need to face each other and mirror each other you face outward externally and so him and I are getting our energy from source energy it's coming through us we're holding hands in that it becomes infinity energy and abundance and then we're facing that outwards and like having tons of energy to give the world and to build beautiful things in the world and to make content like I is 7 a.m on a Friday morning right now and I'm sitting in my bed making this podcast because I have so much energy I like woke up at six I meditated already did my morning practice met and journaled and like connected to myself and I was like I feel so inspired to make a podcast right now you know this is what I mean. <laughs> um, and when you do this, it, when you're in this vibration of being connected to your source energy and then choosing to come together and have that become this infinity amount of beautiful energy, it actually feels, I will tell you, it feels like you're making love all the time. Like imagine the feeling of making love to someone that you're you're what you you your partner you that you love so much imagine that feeling being all the time like that orgasmic being in your body like being completely in the moment imagine what it would be like to have that all the time this is how it feels when faraday and i are to, like when like being in love with faraday this is i mean i feel this i feel grounded in myself without him but when, when, when knowing, like, just me thinking of him right now and knowing that he exists in the world gives me such an orgasmic feeling that I'm, like, you know, in all ways turned on. And I'm just, like, feeling so full of love and so bubbly and I want to, like, hug everyone and hug him. And, and it can f actually feel very ungrounded, you know? It's like you're flying. You're like, da, 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 da. And so this is why it's really good to come back to ourselves. We, ch we choose every day to have, like, time alone where we can connect to ourselves, connect to our higher self and ground basically. Cause we're like, when we're together, it's just like, like super buzzy and super high vibration. And it's amazing. And, um, and this is the thing that we're learning him and I, it's like how to, how to <laughs> ground that energy, even when we're around each other and, and we're doing really great at it. And what I notice is that when we're around other people, they can feel this vibration it's a kind of a very big vibrational difference like when we're together because we're just like and like everyone around us like I can tell like when we go out and people don't know us and stuff they're just kind of like staring at us and it's not like we're we're not being overly flashy with each other we're just like so in love and we're just so like tuned in and tapped on with each other and with our higher self like it's it's yeah it's an energetic infinity sign happening everywhere and so when you do this, what you also realize is that as individuals, we're connected not only to each other, but we're connected to everyone. You know, when you love, when you're, when you're connected to yourself and your higher self, and then you're connected to your partner, you realize how much like in the bigger cosmos, we are all one, you know, like we're all connected. And when you have this constant knowing that you are always connected with yourself, and then you 
have a physical mirror of that in another person who's like, yeah, I'm connected to myself and I'm connected to you. To me, this is like the point of our existence. It's like the best of both worlds. Like you're awake to the connection that you have with source energy and you're pulling that into your 3D bodies and expressing that to your partner um, and sharing that energy of connection back and forth and amplifying it. And it's so beautiful. And this is why I talk about chosen and free because the, for me, the ultimate goal, <laughs> there's no goal, but like the ultimate reality that I love and that I'm choosing to have right now is to always feel chosen and to always be free, to always be myself completely, my weirdly wonderful self. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about making love. So I noticed you know, in my past relationships, once I was in a partnership with someone, um, the, the concept of like, when are we going to have sex? Like, when are we going to make love? After a while, it became this kind of routine thing. And it became like this kind of expected thing that we're going to do. Or, you know, are we making enough love? Or what does this mean? And da, 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 da. And when I was reading this channeling thing from Bashar, I was talking about how when you're so connected to yourself and to your higher self and so connected to your partner you're basically energetically making love all the time and so when you physically make love with each other it's very flowy like you don't (laughs) and this is how I, I, I can tell you this is how it is with Faraday and I like we don't plan to make love we make love all the time but it's not like either of us are ever thinking like okay when I meet up with him right now we're gonna take our clothes off and like we're gonna have this juicy love and da 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 it's because like him and I are so connected all the time already like energetically that when we make love it's like this it's like a beautiful addition or as we say in English it's like the cherry on top of the ice cream sundae but it's not something that we like need in order to feel connected so there's no scarcity in it it's just like abundance 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 and it's so beautiful and so flowy and so like and then we made love now and then like five minutes later maybe we're making love again or like maybe we haven't made love for two days but it's okay and then like it's just it's just whatever is flowing is what's happening and it's so beautiful and I just love it love it love it and this is how I've always wanted it to be and I'm so grateful for it so (laughs) something else that I that I want to say is that like I, before Faraday there was something called sacred union that I was researching a lot because this is the closest thing that I have found up until <laughs> discovering it within myself Faraday of like the, the love that I wanted for myself and sacred union is something that is like you know you, you're free and then you're choosing but then from that freedom you choose to be with someone and, and then you choose to be monogamous with that person and I just don't agree with it I mean like I think everyone should do whatever they want and I would say that on the day-to-day reality like if if someone were to classify you know is Faraday and Brittany monogamous most of the time we are monogamous because we just love hanging out with each other and there's no one else that's around that we would rather hang out with but it's not like we are locking that in and when you when you understand that from an energetic level it's so beautiful because everyone around us feels the love when we are together because it feels so free to them it's like it's not like we are locking it into each other and only facing each other and giving this love to each other it's like we the love is just there (laughs) it's flowing around us energetically everywhere and everyone can feel it and it's like this vibration where it's like it just kind of gets juicy around us and I'm not saying this in like (laughs) you know a porn way I'm just saying like people can feel it it's it's like catchy you know like even when you can you can feel when you are out and you see a couple who's super in love it's like it brings some warmth to your heart you know and I think that we need more of this um and this is why when Faraday and I first made our podcast on his I highly recommend listening to that um we were we were just kind of we both were like are we going to make people uncomfortable with like how much we love each other? And then I was like, maybe it's time for people to be uncomfortable because again, that's something to learn. If, if it triggers you, then there's something there. If people see us and they're celebrating us and they're just, or they feel nothing, then there's nothing to learn. You know, it's like, 
it only triggers you in a negative way if there's something there to heal um and so now I'm like even and even then like even yesterday him and I were talking and I I had this big realization I this belief where I'm like wow I still don't know if I've really allowed myself to fully love him all the way and it's so beautiful because he's like there's more like I love everything that you're showing to me and how I feel about you and if there's more that I'm even like bring it on and he was just like you know the level of you know me (laughs) what did he say I'm trying to hold on I want to say it the way he said it he was like on a scale of like zero to being too much and like the way that I show my love for him and like all this stuff and like me like being in his life and all this stuff he's like you are not even on the scale you're in the minus so like please take up more space and like show me you love me even more if if you want to and all this stuff and I was just crying because I was like it's everything I've ever wanted and it feels really good in my body and it feels finally like with someone that I feel deserves me and I deserve him and we love each other so much and (sighs) yeah (laughs) yeah just start sharing some of that with you I want everyone this is what we say to each other is like we want everyone to feel this this is so beautiful and it gives us so much power you know we already felt so powerful and now we feel like we can literally do anything just knowing that the other person exists like sometimes if something overwhelms me I just think of him and I'm like it immediately grounds me and um yeah I want I I want this for everyone um something that I think is really interesting is this Bashar Channeling was talking about like when each individual when each and every individual is in love with each other, each and other individual, like from like, we are connected as souls and as tribe and, you know, we are all one in the bigger cosmos, then you slowly become telepathic. And telepathy is not thinking the same thought. It's actually emotionally feeling the same thought. And I find this really interesting because um, I'm going to talk about this in another podcast, but basically the structure of exist- existence is the surface level is your thoughts but right below that is your emotions and so from a very deep level when we are emotionally on the same vibration they say emotion is energy and motion so when we energetically are on the same vibration we emotionally feel each other and then we naturally will start thinking similar thoughts because we're literally feeling each other and experiencing the same reality um and I find this really interesting because most of the, the men that I date, English is not their first language. And when I'm with them, I can start understanding what they're saying in their native language, like when they're speaking a native language with their friends or their family. And it has really freaked out a lot of my past boyfriends because they're like, how do you know Turkish or how do you know, you know, Spanish? I mean, I took Spanish in school, but like I can or Russian or like, you know, because they would be speaking to each other and then I would pl- reply back in English and they're like, how do you know what we just said? And I was always confused. And sometimes I would hide it that I would be this telepathic because it wouldn't be like, like I really could understand what they were saying. And I think it's just because I got, I not think I know it's because I just, I got on this vibrational wavelength with them. And when I went to Austria this summer, I went to Faraday's retreat and I was the only one there who didn't speak German. And the longer that I was there, like the more I kind of secretly fell in love with Faraday. I wasn't telling him this at the time. And I, I really started to understand what everyone was saying. And they, they were joking with me by the end of the retreat. They were like, are you sure that you don't secretly speak German? Because we don't believe you. Like, there's no way that you understand everything we're saying. And I'm like, I don't know. I just do. <laughs> Sometimes I would even pretend like I didn't know what they were saying. Because I didn't, I just wanted to be my own bubble. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, okay, this is what they're talking about right now. Okay, yeah, I don't want to talk to them. I don't want I'm good. <laughs> um, and then now, like, with, with Faraday... Yeah, anytime he's speaking German to anyone, I just, I fully understand what he's saying. So I find that really funny. Um, The paradigm that I want to shift into when it comes to our relating to each other is that every part of our tribe, so every person that I choose to have within my close inner network is connected to every other person within the tribe. Um, So there's times when we take on the physical appearance of 
monogamy. So like with Faraday and I, um, we have this, you know, on the day to day life, we are monogamous just because this is where we're at right now, you know, and that's okay. Um, but if someone else flows into our existence, um, we're open to whatever constellation that comes in to within the bigger bubble of our connection. Like our connection to each other comes first. And then if there's someone else that comes in that we can learn from or that we can have this beautiful experience with that adds to our connection and our bubble of reality, or, you know, one day if that person becomes the person that we, that we want to be with, like we, we are both like awake and aware enough to be like, what are we going to do? Lock ourselves in. The second we lock ourselves in is the second it all starts falling apart for us. So, but then to understand on this deeper level that we're all connected anyways, you know, and and so to have this kind of connection go through our tribe where it's like, yes, I love Ferdinand. And also there's probably going to be other men that come into my life that I have connections with and, and they're beautiful and they honor the connection that I have with Ferdy. And then with him, like he's probably going to have women that come into his life that can learn, they can learn from each other. And then that can add to our, my connection with him. And like within a tribe, I think this is so beautiful. And when I say within a tribe, it's because, when you're in a tribal environment in a community environment where everyone understands and is connected to, I always say I am committed to honoring the connection with you. These are what I say to the people in my community. It's like, I am committed to protecting your heart. I'm committed to doing what is good for you and what's good for all of us together collectively. This is what I mean. This is a safe space to have these types of external connections for me at least and this is what I, this is the new paradigm that I want to bring in and that I'm calling in and that I'm, I'm embodying myself is that within my community of people that I feel really safe with and that I feel honors and respects the connection that Faraday and I have, I feel safe to have more external romantic connections with, you know, because I know that they're not going to quote unquote trying to steal my boyfriend or whatever. It's like that doesn't even exist because we're all connected anyways. And it just happens to be that Fred and I like love each other more and that we want to hang out all the time. We want to be together. So through our actions, not just through our words of commitment, through our actions, this is how we are speaking and this, I'm not speaking. This is how we actually are embodying it. Yeah. So I really believe that people are attached to the idea of committed relationships because they believe it's the only way to guarantee support and connection. Like imagine when you're little and you have this connection with your family, they're supposed to teach you your connection to your source energy and like your connection to your higher self and how to refuel your power and refuel your connection and your energy flowing through. A lot of times in the old paradigm that we're leaving right now, parents don't know how to do this. Right. And so a lot of people, they have this misconception that they have to have, like, you are my parents, so therefore you love me. Or you are my partner, so therefore you love me. It's like they, ha- they have this, like, illusion of commitment to you have to, you have to do this thing because we made this, you know, quote unquote, emotional contract with each other. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what if, what if the new reality could be that you're already connected, you're already com- like you're already choosing to have this commitment with each member of your community that you feel already safe and dropped in with and you're getting you're getting this co-regulation which is them reminding you and helping support you having your connection to your source energy. So basically reminding you of your own power and helping you ground back into yourself and your individuality and still being connected to you. So if you're not ready to, uh, if you don't understand anything I'm saying, or if you're like, this is a lot and I don't know how to do this in my everyday life, the first place to start with is your friends. So if you really want to have this kind of like soul connection, soulmate, um, twin flame, whatever you call it, the kind of relationship that Faraday and I have, the, the, and this is what I was practicing like for the last three years on the, on the island here was building my tribe, building my community where I felt really safe to co-regulate with these people, you know, like when Andy and I were, before we got together, like my whole community knew I was in love with him, you know, like my godparents knew who weren't on the island, all of my friends here knew and everyone knew of him and approved of him and they were, they saw us together and they were like, yeah, he's, you know, go for it. And with Fairday, I went and saw him and his community 
and I could see that he had a good connection with all of his people. He had healthy, you know, co-regulation with his tribe. And then he came here and saw me with all of my people. Actually, he saw me originally because he met me when he came to one of my play parties this last year. And so he already saw me with all of my people and knew that I was very supported and very grounded in myself and with my community. And for me, this is the first foundational layer before you can go to the level of being able to hold <laughs> this relationship of feeling chosen and free because it's a lot. It's a lot of energy going through. Like most people, um, they want this relationship because they see all the benefits and it, <laughs> I will tell you, it is all of the benefits. Yes, it's, it's amazing. And also it's a lot of energy coming through. And so you need to know how to stay grounded in yourself and how to stay grounded as an individual and how to be stay connected to your higher self. Because what happens is if you don't, then you lose yourself in each other. And then you start feeding off each other's energy and then eventually you drain each other and then you break up because you're like, I want to be myself again. And this is a loop that I kept seeing over and over and over again. And it, it took me a lot of studying this and also studying relationships and psychology and being very connected to my own source energy for me to figure out how to do this. And it's even like a new thing for me to be able to put it into words. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know anyone else who's doing this. This is why I'm like sharing this on a podcast because I want to inspire all of you to also be able to do this for yourself and for each other and, and to have this kind of community that I've built here and that Faraday has built on his own in Germany and now brought here. <laughs> and uh, it's so beautiful. And, and then that community supports the relationship um and it just goes in this beautiful infinity cycle of energy flowing through in a, in a way that feels good for everyone so yeah when you search for someone to make you complete or whole it will never work instead you'll attract yourselves to someone who reflects your own feelings or lack of worthiness and wholeness so each mirror is a is a reflection so if someone isn't connected to themselves and their higher self, then they just mirror each other and reflect this back and back and forth. And so if you're like, my partner doesn't love me in the way that I want them to, and that's triggering for you, then that's actually a mirror of you not loving yourself. Because if they didn't love you in the way that you wanted, you would just be like, okay, let's break up because this doesn't match my standards. Like I love myself and I'm just not attracted to this. But if you're trying to like fix that, then that is actually you needing to fix something within yourself and love yourself. It's an opportunity for you to love yourself more. I have some notes. So I'm just looking at them. One second. Yeah, so something that Faraday and I are always saying to each other is that we're committed to the idea that we are co-creating this relationship in whatever way the connection flows. So this is actually like a live entity that we are, you know, just naturally, it's kind of like a little baby. We're like feeding the baby, hanging out with the baby, but the baby is our energy bubble that we are in and that we're loving and nourishing within ourselves. Um, and when all of this is done with love, any change to the relationship is always a positive. Because if you're like, if you're committed to change, change is the only constant. Like all change serves and allows us to serve others and ourselves. And this is what I was saying about consciousness. Consciousness wants to grow. So if you're with someone and you suddenly are not growing anymore, consciousness is gonna fuck with that. Like it's gonna either have it happen through pain or pleasure. Whatever you choose is your timeline. But if you re realize that everything has to keep changing and growing, then you can choose to grow together. And this is why I always say, instead of facing each other and trying to fix each other, you can work through your stuff enough where you can hold hands and face ac externally outwards because then you have all of this energy and the universe is like, okay, if you don't need to grow you know, internally anymore, then you can grow externally and like build things in the 3D reality together. And this is like what Faraday and I are like, we're like, we have so much energy to do all these things in the world that we're just like trying to ground ourselves and pick which one we want to do first. And when you stay true to yourselves and what you know is good for yourself and your connection to your higher self, it will always lead you to positive growth and learning. And this is the whole point of connection. Um, yeah and one thing that I really believe is that in some ways we always remain uh, connected to those people that we had a relationship with so once we created this connection 
it actually kind of goes on forever no matter how many different ways it may transform and this is one thing that still kind of hurts me about Andy is like he doesn't realize this you know like with all of my past boyfriends um, I've had times where their new girlfriends or wives or whatever is like I don't want you to talk to Brittany anymore and I'm like why like I I I support your guys's relationship I if I still wanted to be with him I would still be with him there's a reason why I'm not with them anymore and I just want to keep the connection going because it's beautiful and we already spent so much time like learning each other and growing together and like now we're just going to throw that all out the window but again this is their own level of growth and what their own security is and their own connection to themselves and so I have to respect the timeline and and with Faraday I've like talked to him about this because he's um he's like feels exactly the same way and this is like what I love it's like you know if either of us have a past partner come into our life we're like we like honor that and honor the time that they spent together and the experiences they had and all the growth they had and like I think that's really beautiful and (laughs) it just adds more connection like I just want more connection whatever it's going to bring more connection to me or fair day is always a positive thing and if we try and lock it down that just is going to make both of us not happy and it's going to create disconnection immediately without it's all energy it's not about necessarily 3d reality just it it just shows what is already happening energetically inside of ourselves internally it's just like the last little display screen 3d reality is the last display screen of everything you've already have internally and so for us it's all about you know like choosing to really honor our principles with each other and really embody this whole thing about being chosen and free like we just had a play party this last weekend where you know we it was the first time that I ever announced I was a couple in one of my own play parties and I had a lot of feelings about this because I was like all this feeling of like am I actually free you know and we stepped aside we talked about it we talked it through and we both were like okay we have to honor we have to honor everything we were saying to ourselves and to other people about being chosen and free. And then we did. And then the next day, I will tell you the next day, and I know Faraday feels, feels the same way because he said this to other people, is is the most connected we'd ever felt to each other it was because we went through this whole experience and we still were able to feel chosen and free with each other and then connect on that vibration. It's like we tested it out it worked out (laughs) we love each other just as much even more so but our 3d reality was you know we made it through and we were stronger together and we were able to grow from that experience we learned a lot from it (sighs) so this is all the ways that i view relationships (laughs) i hope that this helps you and i'm here to tell you that um yeah i just really I'm committed to allowing myself to be even more in love and be even more uh, receiving of Faraday's love and and expressing to him externally all the love that I have inside. Um, And so, yeah, if you see us around or on social media and we're just like this like gooey love bubble, (laughs) I hope that it uh, gives you some strength and power. And if it makes you uncomfortable, I hope that it's a beautiful invitation for you to relieve release something so that you can allow more of this love in that's already there we're all connected and it's all so beautiful and i want this for everyone okay have a beautiful day so one last thing i want to say about relationships is we have a choice on how we want to receive love in our relationships and that goes down to the foundation of that is how much we are willing to give ourselves love and accept ourselves for who we are and who we know we can be and all, all that we are you know which is unconditional love like that is the baseline what happens a lot of times is we get fucked up from the way that our parents are showing us love when we're little and we get imprinted with their version of what they believe love should be and like through this podcast the reason why I'm <laughs> recording it too it's kind of a time stamp for me to honor and release this major belief that I'm releasing <laughs> this major belief that I'm releasing that love has to hurt or be dramatic. Um, this is, I like sat down and I encourage you to do this too, is like to really analyze how your parents showed you love growing up. Um, because from my mom, my mom gave me a version of love that was unconditional, but it also came along with a lot of 
like helping her. Like she was kind of emotionally helpless most of my life. And so when my dad was in the hospital when I was a kid, cause he had cancer, like my mom would come to, I was seven years old. And my mom would come to me and ask me what to do, you know, or like even throughout the rest of my life when my dad was being really crazy, my mom would come to me and complain to me about it. And I was just like this kid that wanted to play but I loved my mom and she loved me and this is how I thought love was, you know? And then my dad was just full of pain and his way of showing love was sarcasm, ridicule, emotional abuse, and he was also super emotionally unavailable. And so this is the way of love that I got imprinted from both my parents. I didn't really agree with either of them. Like, I think consciously I was like, even consciously when I was little, I was like, I don't deserve this, I deserve better. Um, but you know, it's still, it's still subconsciously sunk in and I, yeah, I was, I was either with men that were, and women, I've dated a woman before, I was with people that needed a lot of help or they were super emotionally unavailable and abusive, you know, and uh, mostly emotionally abusive. And I... I took a lot of time in the last couple of years to really sit with this and and I fully released it this the beginning of this year and then still had some experiences where I was coming up with some of these limiting beliefs and I just remember being in the middle of the relationship and being like no I don't no nope, no this is not this is boring to me this is not even something I want to deal with right now and it's nothing to do with those people. I still loved the people that I was with, but it was the, the way that they were showing love did not resonate with me anymore. It didn't trigger me anymore. There was nothing left to learn. It was just not attractive. It was just like, I deserve better. Like when something triggers you, it's something to learn. When something is just not interesting, it's time to move on. And this is how I felt. I was like, this is definitely just time to move on. I know my standards. I know how much I love myself. I take care of myself really well. I treat myself really well. And I deserve to have this in a partner. And I know that I share this, this vibration of unconditional love with my partners. And I deserve to have that reflected back. Um, so I just really want to imprint to you guys that love does not have to hurt. Love can feel good and does feel good all the way through. This is the kind of love that I have with Faraday and it's so beautiful. And it's, a, it's the thing that I'm really sinking in these days is allowing it to come into my body all the way. That it's safe to receive this love all the way. Because I've always known it's safe for me to give my unconditional love to my partners because I know within myself my vibration is pure and I love so purely and I don't, want any, I don't need anything in return because I give it all to myself, you know? But it's so vulnerable to receive love and to let it in all the way and not have this projection field of like, yeah, you can love me, but here's a wall. And you only, you're basically, you know, loving a mask or a version of me that I'm allowing you to see. And I'm not letting it in all the way because then if you hurt me, then it doesn't hurt as much. But what you really are doing is not living fully. And I have always told myself that I want to live all the way through. I want to experience this 3D reality all the way through. And so what I've been focusing on and expanding in my body is that it's safe to rest in this love and to recharge and build a life from this higher vibration because imagine me i'm over here like just spouting out unconditional love to everyone and then to finally have someone in ferdinand who is also unconditional love all the way through and just loves me and wants to help me even when i get triggered like we just recorded another podcast uh, recently and I was just like got triggered in the middle of the podcast and kind of like walked away and then he was like whoa let's sit down let's talk about this and then I just fully came back to myself and I was like oh wow this is this is what love is you can just you can just support each other and have it be beautiful you know so I want to leave you with this beautiful thing that I wrote and I posted on Instagram re recently and it's my version of love so do you want to know my version of love? I believe we have a beautiful invitation to first come into union with ourselves, to be fully awake and embodied in our unique flavor of authenticity, and then attract in union with another soul, a chosen love born free, born from complete freedom of dependence, a free love. Consciousness wants to evolve to this level and we are first waking up to this, to wake up to the fact that we are all one, 
And we came here to experience individuality and then from there choose to be so fully embodied in our separateness that we come back full circle and choose love again on a higher vibration. We will so deeply embody our principles. There's no need for contracts and rules. We love because we choose to love in the now. And every moment we renew because every moment is lived so fully it becomes a lifetime. And then we will really understand the meaning of immortality. Okay, I love you guys. Have a beautiful day.